there's nothing about us that is more than or greater than anyone who else who is watching this. Like, yeah. anyone else out there. Like, we've just taken the time to learn the things that we needed to learn to so that we here. can be out here. Yeah. And, like, you can do that, too, or you yeah. can do that in your own way. And that's, mm -hmm. like, and that's kind of the really the beauty of just being human. Like, you can engage in the arenas and like make yourself exactly who you want to be and like really manifest your destiny in that mm -hmm. way that's part of the reason why we're here <laughs> yeah is to engage in one of the biggest challenges of our lives both like a physical and mental challenge and even if we don't like accomplish the goal that we set out to do we still have engaged in this great challenge and have learned, adapted, and grown from it, and that's all that really matters. From the first moment Liam and I picked up paddles, our lives changed. Of course, we didn't know this at the time. We were just two 12-year-old kids at a summer camp in Tomogamy, Ontario. Canoeing was our pathway into wilderness, a path that led us to a deeper understanding of ourselves, of our planet, and of life around us. It had pretty much been four years since Jake and I had really connected in a meaningful way. After high school, we took directly different paths, and years had passed since either of us had spent any time in a canoe. We'd been planning for almost a year to paddle up what's known as the Inside Passage, a stretch of coastal waterways from British Columbia to Alaska. 800 plus miles of ocean paddling? It almost didn't even feel real to say. We were both 22, entering transitional periods in our lives and feeling a pull more than ever to reconnect with canoe tripping and traveling for extended periods of time through wilderness. I also really just wanted to get to know my best friend again. Canoeing had been such a big part of our lives, but we had never actually shared that experience with each other. Now is our moment in time to dig our paddles in deep and go north. You're dealing boat. with the open ocean, man. Yeah. <laughs> there's old fishermen and bold fishermen, but yeah. there's no old bold fishermen. <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> and you guys, I've, I've been listening to you. You've done a lot of reading, a lot of study. But get out in the fucking West Coast forest and try to get a, a, a fire going. Yeah. You're going to... Um, it's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wetsuits, when you said wetsuits, you ever said that? Dry suits, yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. You'll be you'll be in this. You'll be wrong for the Yeah. Because there's going to be really shitty. I don't, look, I mean, there's no rain down here. Yeah. Fuck it's that shit. I'm sure there's a shit ton up there. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, it's, well, it's not that You'll see, but you can always, you can always just cash her in. Yeah. What do you, you just grab all your shit and lose, leave the canoe? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
Eddie, Jake, Liam, Uncle John from Rockies. A couple of things I thought about after you left was, one, stay to the left side, hug the, hug the left shore when you go through Stewart Island. And the other one is, if shit hits a fan, you can come back here and hang out with me. I'll put you on the Hollywood detail and uh, I'll pay you and I'll feed you. Anyway, be safe, guys. Bye. Day two, just coming out of Refuge Cove. The uh, intensity of it all is definitely just hitting me. Us, I should say. The mountains are big, the ocean is deep, and uh, it's salty water, which is new. Yeah, just in a magical fairyland. Oh man. Yep, it's all starting to sink in. Yep, starting to sink in. <laughs> Not quite there yet, but we'll let you know. Here we are, We're chilling here on an island. The rest of the day, we just have to paddle. Yep, bloop. Don warned us that as soon as we passed Stewart Island, things would get colder by 10 degrees and it would start raining nonstop. And he was exactly right. Water temperatures dropped about 15 degrees and uh, it started raining. Perfect, 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 perfect. So this is what the next two months looks like. Not too bad though. Not bad at all. All right, checking in. It's drizzling out. Got a little bit of an ebbing tide. Ebb in here goes north, so it's just kind of pushing us along as we need to go. Today, I mean, it's 11, no, it's 12.30. Yeah, it's tw that's a whale. I think those are whales. Yep, we're hearing whales blowing right now. Ooh. I told you I heard a whale. All right, settle down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 12.36. 12.36, we've gone about eight miles this morning. Got out at 7.20. In a little over an hour, we did about five and a half miles which is not a bad pace, but now my back is fooked. <laughs> Just trying to find a spot to uh, put our tent, which is proving more difficult since either, since here in BC that the uh, mountains either just come up right from the ocean or the places that are flat have lots of bear activity. So, it's a bit hard right now. Update, day seven. So we're just trying to look on the map and see what our day is gonna look like. Yep. yep. Day seven. And we are fully suited up today. Woo. Can barely breathe with the next seal on, but it'll at least keep me dry if I fall in. Just wanted to show you guys how brutal the sun has been the past few days. Um, take a look at my hands. These are sun blisters from paddling in the sun. My hands have started to blister. Pretty brutal. They start out with an itch and then they hurt. Right now they don't really feel like anything but they hurt to the touch. Pretty gnarly. We got all our gear. Our gear lined up here. Or most of it. Um, our boat is over here, and our food bag and kitchen box are over there. Liam's also right there going to the bathroom right now. Um, but yeah, this is our little cove where we stayed. There are gale force wind warnings today, but right now it doesn't seem too bad. It's supposed to pick up more in the afternoon. So we're going to go out to the bigger strait and check it out and see if we can get anywhere. If not, we'll probably just find some place to camp and wait it out. Not really much else we can do. So, yep, that's the plan for day seven. Starting off with some crazy weather. 
Well, it's a bit windy here this afternoon. Post lunch. Oh yeah. Oh, keeping her straight into the wind is a challenge for sure. Man, oh man, it blows here in the afternoon. It really is just like a switch. 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock rolls around, the wind picks up, waves get bigger, everything gets harder. Bouncing around. Not super fun when you're in an open boat canoe. Our wet max for wave height is about one to one and a half feet standing. And uh, not, not, yeah, not quite there yet, but it's getting pretty close. So we're on the hunt for camp for the night, pretty much. We got about to where we wanted to get today. We knew it was gonna be pretty windy, so uh, I mean, any day that you make it into camp and can have hot food's a good one, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, big one. Just have to make it up the island. We're playing our way over. Oh yeah. got stopped in our tracks by the wind out there in Cleo um, Cleo Passage Cleo something I'm trying to make it into the Broken Islands today but didn't quite get there yeah one week man flew by flew by and was also like very slow at the same time I think Jake and I are getting in sync a bit more getting our rolls down we've got our little patterns developed and uh, yeah it feels really good it feels really good to have that the thought of doing it for another 10 weeks is daunting for sure we went over the maps last night and just looked at all the water that is from here just to the start of Alaska and there is a lot of big big water I think both of us would be pretty fine if, you know, there was some trip ending something. I think we'd both hop on a ferry and go to Alaska. <laughs> I think what it's going to come down to is our, our mental strength of wanting to keep going and keep paddling because it's a lot of miles. We're probably going to run into quite a few problems. Who knows what, but as we continue to go north it's going to get more and more raw more and more real in a way so pretty excited about that refer to the first 10 days as the warm-up because it really was we were really getting acquainted with the landscape we were getting acquainted with paddling through the ocean we were getting acquainted with the locals it was a lot of newness all at once honestly just like learning learning what the wildlife was like out there like what the different sounds were that you weren't used to there's a lot of like little details that you wouldn't think about that yeah. you become aware of as soon as you're out there we really learned a lot from the landscape around us and from the locals that we met. Yeah. <laughs> we met some pretty funny locals and pretty kind locals too. I mean, everyone we met was super like generous and 
supportive yeah. of what we're doing. They're like, oh, but also you're a little crazy. Like, yeah. Why like, <laughs> did you we didn't, to Yeah, we didn't see any other small crafts besides the first day out. We were really the only small vessel out there amongst these other power boaters. Yeah, and I mean, that was the other thing that really kind of surprised us. We had a definite, like, thought about what it was going to be like um, isolation-wise, mm -hmm. wilderness-wise, um, and be just because of the proximity to Vancouver and to Seattle, there was a lot more pleasure crafts than we thought there would be. There was a lot more boats and yep. people than we thought there were going to be. That ended up like really being a positive thing, actually. And we were really able to connect with people who were traveling in those waters in like a real way. And to really kind of like share stories and, and hear about their travels. And it really kind of made that first leg incredibly rich. You know, these trips, there's not like, there's not a lot to do when you're just paddling. It's just like you're just paddling the boat. You're not, like, it's sometimes kind of mindless. And so you just end up talking about weird stuff when you talk. Um, so it was just like talking, it's stuff like, I don't know, just to give you some sense of it. It's like, um, like, you know, what would you be, samurai or ninja? Or who's better, Vikings or pirates? Or would you rather make decisions super slowly, but always correctly, okay. or split instantly and depends? Going through every like single right tie. <laughs> all right, all right. You know, just like shit like that, that just kind of like doesn't really matter, but it's just, I don't know, fun. And then I like, you get to know all those weird random things about someone, and like at the end, somehow, just because of knowing all those like super random things that you would never thing to ask a normal human being in a normal context that's just kind of the stuff that comes out on canoe trips and that's a, like that's one of the many reasons why I love them is just from the sheer monotony of the thing that you're doing you get to really know someone on a different scale it's like micro which is pretty sweet day 10 pulling into Port Hardy Muscles are sore from yesterday's full pull. Uh, yeah, this concludes leg one, pretty much. Uh, it's been pretty awesome. Couldn't have asked for a better start to the trip. Now we're here to relax a little, refuel, get some more supplies for the next leg figure out the next leg and uh, send her from there. Fuck yeah. It's been a good 10 days. Our original plan was to cross the Queen Charlotte Strait in a good weather window. And we had been talking throughout the trip about possibly not doing that and getting a ride across instead which we ended up doing. We didn't really want to risk the exposure so early on in the trip. The time that we saved by crossing the Queen Charlotte by power would be better used on the back end of things when we get further north up into Alaska. Yeah. Have a little bit more bandwidth both mentally and physically to work with. We just paddled around Dryad Point and camped here last night. Having just been recently reproed, this is the part of the trip where we eat with reckless abandon. 
until we realize in about five days that we've gone through much more food than we anticipated and we need to cut it back. It's the sine know. wave of consumption. You chew the lifesaver? Yeah, so good. Mm, you monster. <laughs> <laughs> right in front of us is the Pacific Ocean in all its glory. It's big. The uh, swells have been coming down the channel pretty consistently through the morning. And uh, yeah, it's been pretty sweet. was pretty much our first like big exposure area mm -hmm. definitely was a bit intense a bit intimidating to me at least <laughs> oh yeah no for sure It's been a long day. We are feeling a little under the weather, at least Liam is, and I've had a little bit of a cough the past couple of days, but other than that, it's a glorious day, super calm, yeah, a little bit of a late start today again, they're both pretty dead still, <laughs> didn't want to get up, it's almost 10 o'clock now, June 25th, Tuesday, sun is beating down again. Woke up this morning, felt like shit, have a head cold. <laughs> Probably something to do with paddling 70-ish miles in the past two days. Either way, here we are. <sighs> Sitting here on a little beach, rocky beach, waiting for the tide to turn from ebb to flood so that we can ride the flood through this little rapid. It's neap tide, so there's not going to be more than two or three knots of current going through. Which will be nice, slingshot us up into the Princess Royal, finally. Man, it'll be good to be in there. So, so good. It was another brutal Sunday today. We're baked to a crisp. Wishing we could jump into a kiddie pool of cocoa butter. Yep. Shoulders hurting. 20 days in, starting to wear down. <laughs> but yeah, that's all. Great good little update. The wind died at least. It's nice and calm for now. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, so we're currently on the Princess Royal Channel. The first day on it. It was a shitty one. We weren't on it. We haven't been on it for that long. But we're just tucked away in a little inlet. A couple miles up from the Hackation Arrows. Yep. And hopefully we'll get farther tomorrow. Hopefully the wind crop cooperates. Yep. And we're able to get farther because, yeah. I was feeling like shit this morning, so it was a rough... Yeah, Liam woke up feeling like shit. Just so hot. And so hot. Probably a little dehydrated as well. That's what I'm drinking now. Mm. The UV index is off the chart, and we're just on such big bodies of water that the reflectivity is just, like, massive. Yeah. It's Insane. Crazy. It's, like, on all the river and lake trips that I've done so far, nothing compares. <coughs> if you don't have, nothing. like, sunglasses on, your eyes will start to water in, like, a minute. Yeah. Oh, man. 
Yep, pretty exhausted. Yarp. Alright, well, we'll check in tomorrow. Yep. Time for bed. Good night. See you later. Oh my goodness. Here we are. Still on the Princess Royal. It's been rough. <laughs> Not gonna lie. First few days I was sick. Still kind of fighting something. The sun is relentless. The water is very big. Not that it's like waves or anything. It's just there are large bodies of water. You'll paddle for four hours and the same point of land that you started looking at is exactly the same distance away. So demoralizing is uh, a good word for it. Yeah, I had a fun talk last night about realistic goals and pace. And uh, decided that we are probably going too fast and we're gonna burn out. We've been averaging 25 miles a day for the past four days. Um, so, if you do the math, that's 100 miles in four days, uh, which is a lot. It's a lot. And uh, we're definitely feeling it. The back and shoulders are rough. They are rough, rough. Um, so, yeah. We're just taking it one day at a time. And... Uh, we're gonna do our best. We're out of the Princess Royal. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Yar. Look at that. Oh, wow. Yep. Boom. That point. That was it. Dragon's Channel. There's like seven channels that converge here. It's pretty messed up turn wise and tide wise. We don't know how high the tide's gonna come tonight. We haven't even fixed our tent yet because yeah. we haven't decided if we want to fix it on the beach or back in the woods in an annoying spot. Oh, yeah. So there's that. Yep. The waves are big here. Yeah. Yeah. 23. Day 23. All right, six o'clock in the morning. We're starting our crossing of Whale Channel. We're hoping to get to Low Inlet today on the Granville Channel. It's a good 25 mile push. We've already done about 20 miles, 21 miles. So yeah, it's been a busy morning. <laughs> Looking forward to a rest day tomorrow. Pretty stoked. to have a rest day today. Usually this isn't what breakfast looks like. Usually it's like a mad rush that's shoveled down in five minutes before the boat gets loaded and we shove off. The thing that kind of we keep coming back to is like, we're not like extraordinary guys. Like we're just ordinary people out like doing this thing mm -hmm. you picture yourself as an onion you come out here to like peel back a layer peel back a couple layers or you know like on a trip this length you just fucking cut the whole <laughs> done in half <laughs> you see the heart of it yeah yeah but no it's like yeah you come out here to really kind of dig a little bit deeper into who you are and then and and like a lot of that introspection and a lot of that thought comes from like the challenges that you face out here and the and the hardship that is just living out in a place that doesn't really care about your well-being mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah in a place that doesn't cater to your well-being you have to kind of get out there and carve it out one thing that we like haven't really touched on yet is like why we come out here to like 
wilderness. There's nothing more real and like true than being in like an unchanged, naturally occurring place. And that's what this place is. We're in one of the last remaining temperate rainforest right now. Places like this are dying around the world. Being out here reminds you of how important our planet is and how important diversity of life is. That's a huge part of why we come out here to these wild places is just to like remind ourselves of where we all live and what our world actually is like. <laughs> and that's huge. Our routine pretty much is we get up, pack up all of our stuff, put it in the boat, like eat breakfast, and then we paddle for eight hours a day. And we do the exact same thing for eight hours a day. There's very little change in our routine other yeah. than like the places that we see and the like animals that we encounter and like the, the people that we meet along the way. Like those are the things that make the trip what it is. But yeah. like, I don't think I can think of a, a better way of encapsulating that feeling of just like, everything has a purpose and you're doing the exact same thing like every day to reach a larger goal. All right, we're nearing Prince Rupert. We've got this mega freighter to our right. And there's the ferry terminal up ahead, almost to Rupert. Where are we? On the ocean. That's where we are, somewhere. <laughs> somewhere out there. Halfway through the trip. Mm -hmm. What are you struggling with? like hoping that we can make it <laughs> and like trying to convince myself that we can mm -hmm. and that everything will go right and we'll make it there to Juno. So you're struggling with the thoughts that you can't make it? Is that, that what you're struggling? can't make it, yeah. Or like what about you? Happen? Like you personally, not me or like us or whatever, but like what are you struggling with? What I said before, getting back into the routine is always tough. And today was definitely one of those days of felt like, ooh, back in the canoe paddling against a nice flood tide for four hours wasn't that fun. I'm, <laughs> I'd rather be doing something else maybe or something more exciting than that. The struggle is just getting back into the routine for now. And like, yeah, that's pretty much the main thing for me. Yeah, it's definitely daunting to think about how much further it is to Juno and how much more paddling there is between here and there. Just like one thing, at least for me, that I always feel on these like longer trips is just boredom. Like after so much time goes by, like you're like, fuck, all right, I do not want to paddle like the same thing that I did yesterday. Mid mid trip, total transparency. That's what I'm struggling with. It's boredom, doing getting up and doing the same goddamn thing every single day. Like wears on you for sure. Wears on me, not you. Maybe whoever you are or you. Um, <laughs> but it wears on me a lot. Definitely, I'm someone who likes to switch things up. What's keeping you going? <laughs> I guess just the possibility of like crazy <laughs> happenings. <laughs> the unknown. So about being bored. <laughs> we have right, oh, she just spotted us. We have a mama grizzly and two cubs who We're have just spotted us. Make our way. Let's make our way this way. They have spotted us. We are known. They have huddled up. Walking away. Oh, they're running off. <laughs> Let's 
Yeah, they're still... They're running up into the woods. How do we feel? <laughs> Better. <laughs> bear spray's ready. Got the air horn. Bear spray. Damn. They're making their way up into the, like, end up into the woods. But yeah, there. She's still trying to figure out what we're doing. Yeah, there they go. Should keep an eye out. I bet she goes into the woods and skirts around us again, back over to that stream. Let's hope she doesn't pop out by our sight. Yeah. Well, that was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Careful what you wish for. Yeah, <laughs> that was a too soon. <laughs> I was gonna warn Liam, like, be careful, but I just did. <laughs> Just got a warning. <laughs> it already happened. Oh, I see him still on the edge. Wow, that was, yeah. That's a big bear. How did we not see that sooner? I'm not sure. <laughs> That's a little concerning. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't run towards us. Yeah, same. There was a moment <laughs> when I thought she would. Yeah, there's a moment <laughs> when she spotted us and just like... There's nowhere for us to launch our boat. The tide is like way out. <laughs> it just like wouldn't have been possible. Yeah, we'd have been We wouldn't have been able to escape in the water, that's for sure. Definitely sleeping with the bear spray in my hand tonight. <laughs> We're just sitting down, having a little snack. Big Mama Grizz and two cubs lumbering right towards us. Didn't even know we were here. But now they do, so hopefully they avoid us. Little spurt. <laughs> yeah, wow, that was crazy. Vessel Mystic calling United States Coast Guard. Over. Ba Boom! Back in the U.S., baby. Here we go. Yes. Just crossed over the uh, the line, the random line, and now we're in the U.S. <laughs> But pretty psyched to be in Alaska. Whoop whoop. Not bad. Not bad at all. This is the most exposed portion. It's just like open Pacific, rip it yeah. right in. Psychologically, it's the hardest, definitely. Yeah. So much water that's like coming at you and terminating right here. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, it's a straight shot. I mean, you can kind of tell the way they're crashing on that rock, but not really. Yeah. They are pretty tall. Yeah. Would capsize any normal canoe. And we went to go paddle back out around this point here, and we just got immediately slammed by three to five foot waves. Okay, I don't know, bro. I think I wanna go put on my dry suit. <laughs> yeah, so we waited for a little window where we could rip our boat around. Just not easy. Turning our 18 and a half foot boat is pretty difficult. <laughs> you can't really do it fast. Mm -mm. So we had to wait for a solid enough window where we felt confident we could get it around without getting broadsided and fucked. <laughs> Hope 
open for some calmer waters early in the morning tomorrow so we can make a good push up to catch a can which is about 23 miles yeah really close not far no we could totally do that in a day all weather dependent yeah that's the, those are the worst conditions we paddled in all trip so far but yeah today was a bit rough motivation has been low low energy not great sleep yeah it's kind of all adding up to just rough days yeah. <laughs> looking forward to getting to catch a can hopefully tomorrow yeah very much so yeah hopefully it will be good to go to wrangle hopefully <laughs> yeah tomorrow we hit it early and we hit it good right or through and headed to catch a can so where we got pinned down last night by some mega waves four to five foot waves looking a lot better this morning still not amazing but not bad at all here we go crossing over to bold island on our way up to ketchikan yeah had a good little repro rest in Ketchikan, met some kind people, who gave us beer, Hi. now it's time to go. Liam's ready. That's the suburbs of Ketchikan over there, across the way. We came from inside this point. Ketchikan's just to the right there. Yeah. Yep. Nice chill fun. day. We got a pretty late start. Yeah, we started paddling at like 12. Yeah. Only paddled for like three hours. Yeah. <laughs> three and a half hours today. We made it's... it around like 8 to 10. Yeah, we almost hit 10, which is pretty good. I'm happy about. Happy yeah. where we are. <laughs> Don't care. <laughs> Don't care. Don't fucking care. We'll do 20 tomorrow. 20 the next day. Yeah. We'll be good. 20 the day after that. Then we'll be in Wrangle. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are, day 41. We're about 25 miles from Wrangle right now. Last night, able to snag probably the biggest fish I've ever caught before. Woo! <laughs> there you are. Sometimes it's hard to tell if we're actually moving or not. If our stroke's actually doing anything. We're actually just moving backwards, hard to say. But I think we're moving forwards. <laughs> now we are. We are, we are. Slowly but surely. Hotel and real food tonight. The only... Huh? <laughs> The small comforts that drive us forward. <laughs> and beer. Lots of beer. Beer. <laughs> we like beer. <laughs> oh, you have excited the beast. <laughs> Take me to beer. Take me to beer, yeah.
All right, we just finished loading up our boat in Wrangell, and we're about to paddle off for the final leg of our journey up to Juneau. Super excited. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we like it. The final leg to Juno. Bittersweet, for sure. I know that once it's all over, I'm gonna definitely miss being out here a lot with my friend Liam. <laughs> but yeah, also we've been out here for so long, it's like, <laughs> Day 46, I think it is. Still getting surprised. <laughs> Wild. I guess the 46 days were worth it to get here. Feeling so, like they were worth it. <laughs> yeah, today is a positive day. Even though I'm tired and cooked from the sun. Yep. Still feel good. Inside. <laughs> I'm in. Inside, I feel good. Inside. places, the more questions I have. And the more questions I have, the more research I do, the more I learn, and the more I respect. And that kind of, that cycle of questioning, learning, respecting is so huge to life in general. If you don't understand something, how can you possibly respect it? Attempt at boarding an iceberg. Here we go. I mean, there's not much current. icebergs, saw a glacier, saw a sick uh, waterfall, felt very small navigating through some massive mountains, and then we did it all in reverse. <clears throat> Pretty much. Yeah. Cool. Well said. <laughs> sign him off. Oh yeah. Let's see. Sign, signing off. Hmm. What's your signature sign off? <laughs> And that'll do. Let's see. Lovely, lovely. All right, day fifty. We're on the water. Finally, it's like eleven thirty or something like that. Yeah. Um. So, we're just making our way, making our way to Juno, we're about 90 miles away, so five-ish days, somewhere in there, 
Yeah. Just plugging away. so thankful that like we've been treated kindly by mother nature and its inhabitants it just makes you feel like you belong in a way out here i think we're still both kind of in like uncertainty mode like we're still in go mode like get the juno and that's yeah. like where our focus has been for so long we haven't like fully had the time to like realize how far we've come and what we've done and everything we've seen we've almost paddled 800 miles like <laughs> what <laughs> that's craziness yeah we've just come so far there were times where we definitely doubted it and like didn't think that we were gonna get this far or like yeah didn't think we were gonna have the energy or the stamina to make it this far and to like be here and like pretty much at the destination that we set for ourselves yeah it's just like indescribable how it feels <laughs> like, yeah it's i don't even know how to put it in words like i mean it feels really good <laughs> to be like this close to our goal like yeah achieving your goal is always like a really great feeling yeah but then once it's done, you're like, oh, like I did that really cool thing. But like along the way, like getting there was really the fun part. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like all those little steps that we did laid out and like created this trip that, you know, like we're never going to forget. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is the end of our trip together. Yeah. Which is pretty crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah, it is pretty wild, man. We like it's been pretty awesome. Though. This has been a long time in like the books, and like a long time just getting to this like last day. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel like it. Yeah, this is the last day. It no, it like... doesn't. <laughs> we just blinked an eye and we were here. It never ceases to amaze me, like how you can do this so often in so many different contexts and still come out do the same thing again and learn something completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah, I just, yeah, it's kind of yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, there's not many things like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't, for me, I can't really think of anything else that equates to canoe tripping like this. <laughs> yeah, no. It's pretty on its own. I mean, there are other things that can give you the same, similar feelings of like, yeah. living on the edge and like, all your decisions matter, but there's just something about the slowness of canoe tripping and the work that it takes mm -hmm. that's pretty unlike anything else. Yeah. <laughs> pretty special. It's like maddening, and you also love mm -hmm. it all at the yeah. same time. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Well, the bugs are bad. We're gonna go to bed because it's 9.30. 938. 938. July 30th. 938. It's a Tuesday. Turn up on a Tuesday. Turn in on, on a Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> Tomorrow we paddle into Juno. Tomorrow we do. Pretty unreal. Wow. 950. And we are paddling out of camp. The last day of our trip.
I firmly believe that we're unique, but I don't think we're anything special. And if we can do this, if we can like come out here and do the thing that we just did, it gives me a lot of hope for everyone else out there who's just like us, mm -hmm. who just have dreams and want to make those dreams happen. We're approaching the city of Juno, the capital. Looking back on it, like, it was never really about getting there. I mean, the thought of getting there and having that goal that we set for ourselves was definitely, like, a huge fuel for the trip and, like, definitely helped us motivate ourselves while we were on the trip. But after you, after you get there and you come to the end of that, you have this realization that, like, it never really was about that. And it was all the little details and all the little experiences, the people you met, the places you saw, the wildlife you encountered, it was all those little experiences that really made the trip into what it was. It's not the goal that really matters in the end, it's like all those experiences in your life that make you who you are and make your life what it was. There's so many details in life and it just gets more and more complicated and just to take time to really like step away from all of that and disconnect from technology and modern society and kind of reconnect with what Earth is actually like is like a super valuable lesson and experience that I think everyone should at least have a window into that. Like bringing cameras and doing everything was like, this is my window for people to look through. The only way that I can try and relate this, this experience to you is to like show you. The question that we get asked most is, what's next? What are you guys doing next? Like this is such a cool trip, like what? What do you got planned? <laughs> we have nothing. We have no idea what's next. Um, and that's like actually a pretty appropriate bookend to how the trip was. We had no idea how it was going to work out when we first started up to it. We had no idea how it was going to work out when we were two days from Juno. Like, yeah, we just were <laughs> so uncertain about everything. Like up to the point where we arrived at Juno. Um, was like wow we did it <laughs> um yeah and i think like for us like that's like how kind of like expeditions go like we make a plan and we expect to stick to that plan but we also know that that plan is not going to work out exactly the way that we planned it and so uncertainty to us is just kind of like it's just another step in the road like what's next is such a huge question and mm -hmm. we obviously have ideas and like we like we know what we'd like to do yeah. um but we don't have any plans for what's next. Like, what's next is like continuing to live our lives, and I think that's the like biggest thing. Is like, what's next? Well, we keep doing what we love.
a bucket of plum. And that'll do. Mm.